Sean, you would have had many dealings with um, both the Queen and the King over the years. Uh, if we can start off with your earliest memories of the Queen. Well, I suppose the early memories was when she came to New Zealand and we'd line the streets and as a, as a little boy, you know, waving at her and, and just in sheer awe of uh, who she was and, and what it meant coming from this beautiful country and living in a palace and, and all those things as a child growing up, um, following it very closely. So what was it like then the moment you got invited to Buckingham Palace? I think the first time we even came to London really to see, to see Buckingham Palace, to see the Mall and just the history uh, just sort of blew us away really and then to actually go to Buckingham Palace, the All Blacks got invited um, to, to be there and, and to meet the Queen uh, was, was amazing. I was captain in 93 and I was talking to the Queen and I said, Your Majesty, when we were here in 1989 we drank gin and tonic. And we were drinking, I said, now we're drinking tea. And she said, well, Sean, we don't drink gin and tonics before six o'clock. <laughs> so, but she was just an amazing person. Her knowledge, um, her warmth, how you, she made you feel at ease. Um, it was just, just wonderful. And, and what's happening up here now is just testament to her, really. The outpouring of love and to celebrate her life. She had the most amazing life, um, totally devoted to giving. Um, so yeah, it's nice to, nice to be here in London um, and watching all the ceremonies that are going on. We tried to go down to Green Park yesterday to get near the palace, but we couldn't get even close to it. So uh, there's lots of people here. It is uh, very tricky. People definitely want to go and pay their respects. Uh, there's that wonderful photo of you presenting some rugby jerseys to the Queen. Do you remember that moment? Yes, I do. Um, and that was for, for her two boys, her two grandchildren, uh, William and Harry. Um, unfortunately, they didn't wear them the following <laughs> Saturday. Uh, but no, it's, uh, you know, she, as I said, she was an, an amazing lady. And, and I'm, I'm really excited to see how, how King Charles will do also. Uh, you will have met him many occasions? Yes, we, we've met him on a, on a few occasions. Um, but he, he's just in the last three or four days, he's come across so well um, and has a real leader and a, and a real king. Uh, the Queen's knowledge of rugby, I wonder if you had any sense of that. I know that when uh, John Olomu passed mm. away, she actually um, put out a, a tribute to him. So mm. she must have followed his career closely and, and felt a sense of, of closeness to your team. I think, she, you know, in terms, of, in terms of her knowledge of all sports, really, you know, she presented the, the World Cup to Nick Farr-Jones in 1991 at Twickenham. So yes, you know, she loved sport. Obviously we knew she loved horse racing and, and all those sort of things, but she also had a great, great feeling for, for all the other sports. King Charles, uh, how, how do you think he will appeal to the people? Uh, do you think he will reign in much the same way? I think he will give himself, as he said. Life's going to change, obviously, for him, hugely. Um, but he is, you know, he's had a, a lot of time to prepare for this. Um, he's, you know, he's of an age now that he can really dedicate um, a lot of time to what the Queen taught him. And that's why he's had a, had a great teacher. So he's got a, a wide scope of knowledge. Um, and as I said, he's come across really well in these last three or four days. Have you had any gin and tonics with King Charles? <laughs> no, I haven't had a gin and tonic with King Charles, no. I imagine after six he'd probably have one too. <laughs> yeah, maybe he would. I'm sure he would. Um, thank you so much for your time. Thanks Pleasure. for being with us. Thanks, Mel.